then we will be glad. Lord God, as, we, as the word goes forth to me, I, I pray that it will uh, have an impact that is going to set somebody on the right path, that's going to, going to, going to answer a question that they have about uh, their future, that, that's going to reveal to them, Heavenly Father, that the things that you're doing right now has a direct impact on their future, and the things that they, they're going through, Lord God, and though it may seem as, as a bad thing, we know that all things work for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purpose. So throughout it all, Lord God, I, I pray that this repository word will, will, will help them uh, in the days to come. Bless uh, everything that is said and done here, Lord God, and if, if by chance I, I, I might speak out of time, time or out of turn, uh, blame it on my head and not my heart, because my heart is to to, to come as, as clear and as concise as, as I possibly can. In Jesus' name, we pray and we glorify you. Amen. 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 Now, before you take your seats, I want to take you uh, quickly to this foundational scripture that we're going to be working with today. And uh, get, get that part taken care of. Amen. I believe that uh, God had me up late at night putting the scene together. Together, so it could come out correctly and, and precisely the way that he had purposed it. Uh, he woke me up early in the morning to make sure that that uh, nothing changed um, and, and refined and redesigned it. And, and so I think right now y'all can read a word that that uh, I'll leave y'all jump up and down, howl and scream. Amen. And if it does, that's okay. That's what he's meant to do. Amen. We're gonna go to the book of Joshua, as chapter one, verse seven, eight, and nine. That'd be Joshua chapter 1, verses 7, 8, and 9. And it says there, Only be thou very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, thy servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou knowest. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whether, whithersoever thou wilt. Amen. 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 The word God bless the readers and hearers and the doers of His word. You may be seated. Amen. 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 The other day, I uh, got got this word of, about promises and about the word of God. And I've been preaching on that for the last couple of Sundays, uh, understanding what the word of God is all about and understanding what we should focus on and and, and, and what having. The Holy Spirit ended the sermon last week with the word, with, with that very scripture I just read to you. And so right after that, that, that Monday morning, I wake up and he says, I want you to go a little bit deeper into that. I want you to, 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 to explain that more in, 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 in depth. And so I thought about it. I said, Lord, you know, uh, the word of God, the word of God, it, it gives they, they, they call this Bible the Word of God. And so I asked a question, and the question was, Lord, how many people actually read your Word? Not necessarily know your Word, because it, it's going to take a while to know it, but at least it has to be a starting point, and the starting point is reading the Word. So I did a little research, and I, I went to uh, the Gallup poll site, and, and there was an article there that I thought was pretty interesting. It says there that three out of ten Americans interpret the Bible literally. See, and it is the actual word of God. That is similar to what the Gallup poll has measured over the last couple of decades, but it's down a little bit from what they, they, they surveyed back in the 70s and the 80s. As a matter of fact, 49% of Americans say the Bible is, a un, uh, rather, is an inspired word of God, but it shouldn't be taken literally. It's an inspired word of God. It's a, it's a God-breathed word, but don't take it literally. And that's consistent with the common view that uh, of the surveys that the Gallup polls have taken 
for nearly 40 years, in America, actually. And another 17% consider the Bible just some ancient story recorded by man. So they really don't take it seriously. It's, it's, it's a non-fiction, or rather a fiction novel to them. These results made, or were based on a recent uh, poll back in 2000, actually, and the, the high point is a percentage of Americans that favor, favor the, the literal interpretation of the Bible. Is at 40%. So 40% of Americans between the 80s and the, uh, and the 90s felt that the Bible was, was a literal interpretation in the 80s. 20 years later, half believed that much. Half of the people, the low point being 27%, who favored that the Bible is a literal interpretation of the Word of God. So when they read it, they have to believe what they're reading. That's important because the majority of them are, are, are running into a lot of troubles half believing what's in this word. Now, among the major U.S. group, subgroups, there's a majority that holds the view that the, the Bible is the inspired word of God. And I believe that uh, half of that group is here in Divine Grace Christian Fellowship. And we Amen. believe that it's the actual word of God. Amen. The, those Amen. that are connected with Divine Grace understand that there's a there's, there's the, the revelation within this word, once you get into it, that you can't find any place else in any other book that's ever written. Yeah. And so they, they say here in this Gallup poll that highly religious Americans, such as ourselves, and those who are less formally educated, of course, are not like us. We're, we're all formally educated, but there, there's, a, there's a general pattern in there for those who aren't highly educated. Because when you become highly educated, you kind of remove God out of the picture and kind of rely on yourself. But they say a majority of 54% of those who attend religious services regularly on a weekly basis believe in the literal interpretation of the Bible. So when they, so it doesn't matter how smart you are, you is. Right? It doesn't matter how smart you are if you go to to, to church regularly, that means you would be in the Word regularly, and so you believe that it's a, a, a liberal interpretation. But if you're too smart and you don't go to church, it doesn't matter how smart you is or are, you won't believe this Word, right? Which is unfortunate, ain't it? So I believe that we're in a time that there's a lot of things going on. There's a, there's a lot of uh, unusual things popping up. That, that have people kind of uh, lost, drifting, if I could say that. For one thing I know for sure, that those who hold on to the Word of God is like holding on to an anchor of their soul, and they will make it and they Amen. hold on to the Word of God. I believe that this Word is like the rope that's attached to the anchor, and that anchor is called Jesus. Yes. And, 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 and because this rope is con connected to that type of anchor, that means we're connected to Jesus. Amen. And that's where it should be. I believe that the scriptures, as it states over there in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, is that, is that all scripture is breathed out by God. Yes. And it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, yes. for, for training in righteousness. Mm -hmm. And that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete and fully equipped for every good work. I believe that everything that you need to do, that you want to do, that you thought about doing, there's instructions for you here in this Word. Mm -hmm. And if you got in this Word, there's a lot of questions that would be answered, and you would have solutions. That's right. I, I, I talked a little bit about solutions last week. I just kind of want to caveat what I just said with this, this, this uh, experience I had. Uh, at work, we're going through a lot of, a lot of trials and, and tribulations with this one particular financial issue with the troops. And so one of my friends was, was working on that finance thing, and I can hear them talk about it. They come up with all these different answers. Well, maybe we do it this way. Maybe we do it that way. Maybe this and that and other. So I asked him, I said, hey, man, do you have a solution? Mm -hmm. So what do you do I have a solution? You have a lot of answers to what will cause this thing, yeah. but do you have that one solution that I read? He's mm -hmm. like, well, Red, Red Brian, I don't have a solution. I said, okay, well, once you find it, I guarantee you will fix that. It's broken. So I went on by my business. The next day, I hear him in conversation with somebody else. We need to find a solution. <laughs> and, yeah, we need to find a solution. 
Now, I told him he had the solution. Now, if he was a believer in his word like I am, and I know he isn't, but he's going to get there. But I know that God has given me a solution to all the things that I'm faced with. And so I wanted to energize him with that question. Do you have a solution? And so as he continued to meditate on that, guess what? He finally came up with a solution. He started telling those other people, the people that he worked for, how to solve this problem. And sure enough, the problem got solved. Amen. Amen. And so, so that's why I believe that God through the Holy Spirit has inspired me to have a conversation with you today. Amen. Uh, in, in a way, a word of encouragement mm-hmm. to let you know that you got a solution. No matter how old you are, how young you are, you have a solution to the problems that you're faced with. And if, because if you believe in His word, all you have to do is just pick it up every night and, and, and find it. So this is what the Holy Spirit gave me to give to you. Amen. He said that the word of God is given to us to elevate, enable, and equip them mm-hmm. to effectively take part in the plan of God. God wants us to take part in his plan. So he made sure that he's, he's elevated our thoughts, he's enabled us in our abilities, he's equipped us with all our skills to be effective in taking part in his plan. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, who's going to be guiding us and helping us along the way, the word of God will make us alert and, and prepared to take possession of our spiritual prosperity. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk a little bit about what that prosperity really means. Mm-hmm. And, and success, which we gain through Jesus Christ. So a lot of times we have what we need, because we talk, remember we talked about the fullness of God's grace, the grace and truth through Christ, through Christ. We have that, but we don't use what we have, because we don't think we are able to do it. Use mm-hmm. it. We need to let it sit off to the side, go through all these troubles unnecessarily, they would remember, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, God, I had this thing called the Word of God. Right. And when you go back to it, now you get your, your solution to your problem. Days later, when you could have had it days earlier. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so he led me to this story about the children of Israel as they came out of the wilderness, mm-hmm. which we find there in the book of Joshua. Now, the, 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 you know, it kind of sets you up in, in the thought pattern of that. Here is a group of people. If I can put it right, they wasn't between a rock, nor were they between a hard place. Mm-hmm. They were in transition. Mm-hmm. Because these children of Israel wasn't the ones that came out of Egypt, because mm-hmm. all of them had died, the ones that came out of Bible. Right. And these had never really been free, mm-hmm. because they were in the wilderness going to the promised land. Mm-hmm. And so their mindset was as such as like, what's getting ready to happen next? I know, you know, we've been walking around this, this, this wilderness for so long. Why did God keep me for so long? And, there, there, and there, was, there was a promise that God had made and told Moses about. And now Moses is dead. And so God opens up telling them, Moses, my servant, is dead. But he's talking to Joshua, rather. He says, Moses, my servant, my servant is dead. Now you take those people. Into the promise. Mm-hmm. Now you go ahead and lead them into what I told your your your, your, your forefathers, uh, Jacob, about, and the story that I told to Isaac, and the promise that I made to Abraham. You're getting ready to now fulfill that promise. And and, and so as, as Joshua was sitting there, the book of Joshua they they say is is like a memoir. Mm-hmm. It, it was written primarily by by Joshua. And so he was writing the conversation that he had with God. I, I have these books all over the, the house that, and, and I sit down and I write the thoughts of God as it come to me. And, and sometimes I go back and look at what I wrote back in 2006. And, and it amazes me what my thought patterns were back then and, and the belief systems that I was developing that got me to where I am right now. Mm-hmm. And so if you hadn't done that before, you know, those, those memoirs, those, those, those little notes that, that you uh, uh, thoughts that you get, you record those things, it's going to come a time when you're going to sit down and you're going to review that but oh, I remember this. Mm-hmm. And so Joshua had wrote down some things, so as he was going through this, this uh, uh, promise, that he had to remind him, he said, wait a minute, I, I've got certain skills, I've got certain ability that God has given me in order to accomplish this thing. And so one of the things we're going to talk about in, here in a moment talk, talks about his faith and his, and, and his uh, strength and, and, and his abilities that he that he used, he brought to bear to help him do something that nobody's ever done before. Amen? Mm-hmm. So as I thought of this conversation
conversation that, that God had with, with Joshua, I thought to myself that these instructions were really attitude adjustments. All this while he's walking in the desert, he's following somebody else. Now he's in the forefront. Now he's in the lead. Mm -hmm. We can easily follow anybody, but can we follow God? Right. If there's a man in front of us, if there's a pastor in front of us, I can follow what he does. But when I'm out of the way, when I'm gone and all this is just you and God, can you follow God? Amen. And, and that's, that, that's important to know because if you put me in front and I don't need to be there, you're going to get your feelings hurt. Yeah. You know, because I can't do it all. I don't do what God would have me to do. So it's important that you understand that that there's spiritual truths that are valid that you can gain from this word that can help you accomplish the things that God has for you. That's really what this is all about. You. It's about you and God. I'm just here to kind of bring you the message Amen. concerning that. Amen. So I want to share with you three spiritual attitudes or truths, if you will, that I call promised truths. Mm -hmm. that Joshua used to accomplish his part of God's plan. And I believe that these same truths are what you need to meditate on and what you can use as well to accomplish your part in God's plan. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So let's, let's start here at Joshua 1 and 7. That, you know, as I, as I look through that, that the verses 1 through 9, I, I noticed some things about each verse, and there were certain promises that, that God had spoken on. But when I got to verse 7, 8, and 9, I really began to see the meat of the sun. Mm -hmm. And that's really what I want to talk to you about right now. It says in verse 7, he says, Only be you strong and very courageous, that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from the right hand to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This first point I want to make is that God, first off, lets us know what we that we only excuse me, God first off lets us, lets us know that we only need to be what He called us to be. We don't, in other words, we don't need to be anything other than what God called us to be. Right. Amen. Amen. Because when when we choose to observe the commandments of God above all other things, the results become is more that we have more strength to do what God what have us to do, more courage to do what the God we're called for, no matter where we are or what we're doing. He said, be strong and very courageous. Mm -hmm. Now, I was, I was talking to, to one of my grandchildren the other day, and I asked him, I said, why is it so easy to be what you're not than to be what you want? I can be fussy. But I can also be a fixer. I can be a complainer, but I also can be a director. Mm -hmm. So it's easy sometimes to slip into what you're not rather than to be who you are. Mm -hmm. So when God was talking to Joshua, because they just came out of the, the wilderness, and Joshua just lost the man that he was following, it was easy for him to slip into the role of being weak and afraid. But God says, no, Joshua. I want you to only be strong and of a good courage. Mm -hmm. He said, I want you to be strong because there, 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 there's power in that strength that, that only the grace of God will help us to do the things that he would have us to do. There's a power in, in the word of God that, 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 that is barely contained in this, this earthen vessel that we have. It is only by the grace of God that we're able to do those things. It, it's it's, it's something that you have to do in order to gain that strength, though. And then as I looked at it, I saw that you got to wait for God's strength. Mm -hmm. And then you have to stand in God's strength. Mm -hmm. Now, that waiting and standing is not to be, be uh, idle. That, that standing and, and, and waiting really means that you're, you're, you're expecting and you're standing looking for the strength of God so that you can go out and do the things that he would have you to do. Because there's some dreams, there's some promises that he's made to each one of us. And when we look at it from where we are right now, it seems like to be a daunting task. It seems like something that we really don't want to do. But it's with the strength of God only that we're able to go out and do those things. Amen? When you go over there, I'll go, to, go with you right quick to Isaiah 40 and 29. Isaiah 40 and 29. Yeah, 
Isaiah 40 and 29. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at, at 28. I've always loved this, this, this part of this verse here. It says, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, thanks not, leave it in weary. There's no searching of his understanding. Verse 29, he says, He gives power to the faint. And to them that have has no might, he increases strength. See, that, that, that was, a, that was a thing about God that he wants you to be just like him. That's why, why we were created in his image and his likeness. We have the same attributes of God to, to our degree. And so because our God is strong, he will increase us in our power. Because he, he, he will also increase us in strength. Over there uh, in uh, Ephesians 6 and 10, it talks about standing in the, the, the strength of God. Mm -hmm. Standing in the strength of God. Mm -hmm. And when you stand in the strength of God, you're, he's saying to you right there, he says, you will be strong in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He told John to be strong. He said, you will be strong in the strength of the Lord. <laughs> when I look at that, 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 <coughs> that verse, that standing in the Lord in the power of his might, I see the definition of endurance and stamina. Because when I stand in, when I stand strong in the Lord, I have stamina. Mm -hmm. I have that physical and moral strength to resist and withstand anything that comes against me. And when I say anything, I'm talking about such things as illness. I'm talking about such things as hardship. I'm talking about certain, such things that come against us that make us weak, that, 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 that won't give us, that, that takes our energy away, that makes our knees fall. Mm -hmm. When I talk about the power of his mind, I talk about endurance. How many of y'all need endurance sometimes? Amen. Maybe endure long suffering and get through some things. For the power of his might. The power of his might. Back in the day when I used to, I wanted to be buff and, 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 and have a beach body. I to go to the gym regularly. And, and I, I did some study on the most effective way to build muscle mass. And there's, there's, there's one where, where, you, where you do a lot of weight. And that helps endure, so you can endure that, that burden. Mm -hmm. And then there's a thing about stamina. Mm -hmm. And the stamina, that means you can keep it, keep it going over a long period of time. So I learned how to do this one technique called the, the German volume technique. Mm -hmm. And that's where you do multiple reps of 10 with light weights. Mm -hmm. Until your, your muscles get used to it and you just up the weight. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually, when I first started, I could only do 10 pounds or 5 pounds of that. Eventually, I got up and I take a 100 pound dumbbell in each hand and sit there and hit it. Mm -hmm. so, so, through endurance and stamina, right. the connection, the both of them joined together, I was able to build a kind of body that impressed my wife. That's why she married me. <laughs> <laughs> but, but overall, I was able to, to be able to handle heavy burdens. Even now, so I don't work out like I used to, my muscles are used to. That, 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 that handle that, 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 that exertion. Yeah. And so I can, I, I have endurance to go a long way and I have to stand in a yeah. stick and stay. Yeah. And that's really what, 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 what God was telling Joshua. I need you to be able to stick and stay. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can be able to do that is you've got to do it by my strength. Not your strength. Because you're weak. You'll fail. You'll fall. But that's what was happening out there in the desert. Yeah. I need you to be holy strong. That's right. Then he told me, he says, I want you to be, uh, be a courage. Yeah. Be a courage. Now that word courage is, is a word of God that ignites a fire in the mind of the righteous mm -hmm. that makes them zealous for the things of God. Mm -hmm. When I have courage, that, that's like, like over there in Romans when it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. When you have courage, you're, you're willing to step out of your box and do things that other people run from. Mm -hmm. There's people who don't, don't read this word because they say, I don't understand it. But there's so many resources nowadays that you really don't have to understand Yo, yo, I, mean, they got, I, I don't know exactly how many versions of the Bible. They got a, a version of the Bible that will meet your level of understanding. Yes, right. And if, and if yes. you can't read, you can get it on audio. Yes, so right. there's no way exactly. you know, you can, I, I got a, I got a smartphone that's not very smart, but I mean, but it does its, its job. <laughs> and, and this phone here, if I'm, in, in my time, and I don't have my Bible with me, I got a, a Bible app. And I'm sitting there, I'll read the word through the Bible app. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason why you should not uh, gain any, anything from the Word of God, especially courage in, in that particular aspect. Because it's, it's, it's this fire that, 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 is, that is sparked 
all by the word of God. It's like like what, what Ezekiel said over there. I think it was him he was talking about a fire that, that shut up in his bones. Mm -hmm. And just there, there was a thing that, that he had to go out, he had to tell the people concerning the the, the, the uh, thing that Babylon was getting ready to do as far as the captivity, which was the judgment of God. And because he was telling the truth, they didn't want to hear the truth. And so they threw him in prison. And when he came out of he told God, said, Look, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to say your word, but nobody's going to believe me. They're all coming against me. But I can't stop. I can't stop telling the truth because it's, there's a fire inside of me that's, that's burning, and I can't put it out. Amen? And so we have to, one, one of the best ways to become very courageous in the word is to become a Marine. Mm -hmm. If you go over there to Acts 17 and 11, it, it talks about the Marine. These, uh, that, that verse says, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. See, in order to be courageous, you got to have a ready-made mind. I'm already, I'm, I'm getting ready to find out exactly what it is that God has for me in this word, uh -huh. and so I'm ready my mind. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and that starts that fire. It may, it may start out with a little ember. Yeah. When, when, the, when the Holy Spirit begins to span that thing, and all of a sudden, it just it goes into a full blaze. Mm -hmm. And so the Bereans, as the verse goes on, they search the scriptures daily. See, in order to become a great Berean, and someone that, that, is, that is courageous in the word, you've got to be in this word every day. Yes. you got to be in there daily. Amen. They, uh, somebody was, was talking about, you know, if, if, you, uh, uh, if you don't read the word daily, it makes one weak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, E A K, and so you got to be that word daily. Yeah. I, I asked, I asked, I, I did a little, little survey about the word of God at work, uh, just to, just to kind of set what I was getting ready to say in the motion. And I asked, how often, a couple of people, how often do you read? This? Well, I had one person that told me I read it every day for about 15 minutes throughout the day. I said, oh, so you read the Bible every day for 15 minutes, I mean, you know, throughout the day for 15 minutes every time. No, it adds up to 15 minutes. So I do a minute here, I do a minute there, and he, you know. And then I'm going to ask him, I said, so how often do you read the Bible? He says, I read it in the morning about 30 minutes a day. I said, so you sit down in one setting and read the Bible? He says, yeah. I said, okay. And so there's a lot of different levels of, of, of reading involvement. Not that I'm saying this is how you have to do it, right? But if you are finding that you're weak in your word, one minute a day will not get you. It will not get you because there's so many other things that are inside your mind that overshadow that. Mm -hmm. But start where you can. If it's only one minute, invest all you can into that one minute. Yes. Yes. Invest all you can in that one minute, yes. and then, yes. then, then, then as, as the Holy Spirit you know begins to lead and guide you, direct you. He may open up a five-minute opportunity. Right. So now you read it for five minutes a day. And next thing you know, you're doing it for an hour a day. And as you keep on going, before you know it, you gotta, you know, uh, uh, you gotta shut it down because you'll be in that word all day. Amen. Especially if you catch one of those Amen. words that like, oh my goodness, I'm on fire right now because I can see the will of God for my for my life, and I got to know what this thing is all about. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna stop until I get it. That's that's what happens when you get courageous in the word mm -hmm. because it chases that fear of what you can ready to hear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there's some things that, you know, like I told you, that God has spoken to each and every one of us here. That's right. That is a promise. Amen. And you got to find out what that promise is because mm -hmm. it's a terrible thing to die and never get to your promise. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. you never get to your promise. And so there has to be a readiness of mind in that. Mm -hmm. And then God goes on, he, he, he says, turn out from the left of me to a, uh, that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my commandment, my, my servant, commanded you. Well, he's saying that you need to be vigilant. Mm -hmm. You need to be vigilant because, see, the enemy, he's doing whatever he can to stop you from doing whatever you can. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. and he, he, he doesn't just come at you one time. Mm -hmm. He's coming at you all the time. Mm -hmm. so you got to be vigilant. you got you to gotta keep your mind in the game. you got to really be paying attention to what's, what's happening. you got to be a, a diligent watcher like a watcher. You know, always looking for, for, for you know, what David's getting ready to do to me next. Especially when you start reading the Word. Mm -hmm. I, I used to, to uh, read the uh, Army manuals when I was in the military. When I had insomnia, I read that and then I'd be out no time. 
<laughs> and then I started, I said, well, now let me start reading the Bible. And in the beginning, that was in words since the morning matters. And I started reading the word in the beginning. I'm <laughs> And I'm waking up an hour later, like, man, you know, I was really trying, you know, so I tried again. Then we get I'm going again. And so the enemy, what he does is he'll send the spirit of a, a silver on you. And then I tell you, I'm paying attention to that. My mother in law, she, she checked me the other day. I, I love my mother in law because my, my mother passed some years ago. And so now she is. The blood, uh, the blood of my blood, the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. She is my mother. Amen. And so I leave myself open for correction because if my mother was here, she said, Robert Jr., I would listen. Right. So so when mom says, Robert, I listen. Mm -hmm. She just don't call me Robert Jr., but if she ever, she ever does, then I know I really messed up. But <laughs> I was sitting up there listening to some music as I was putting my sermon together, and she came and said, Boy, don't you know what you're listening to? I'm like, no, you pay no attention to it. And she said, well, you got to be careful because that enemy is split. With that particular song, it was a Christmas carol, but it had to do with these two people in an affair. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, when, when I was listening to the Sugar Hill of the Game and, and they were doing all that stuff, those kind of songs excited me. But now that I'm looking for the promises of God, mm -hmm. and the enemy knows that, he's still trying to plant that seed mm -hmm. in my fertile mm -hmm. field because he knows it's going to grow. Right. And so you got to know the same thing. So there's certain things that you got to pay attention to. Like, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to do that no more. Right. And so you got to put those things off to the side. Now, don't beat yourself up about it. Just go ahead and make that adjustment. That's, That's right. all. And it yeah. takes courage to do that. It yeah. takes strength to do that. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and so you got to watch your boundaries. Mm -hmm. See, that's what a good watchman does. He doesn't watch what's going on inside the compound. Mm -hmm. He watches what's happening outside the compound around the boundaries, as you said. Right. And if there's any gate of hole in those boundaries, he does whatever it takes to, to, to seal those those things up again. Mm -hmm. That's what a, what, a, what, a, what a good vigilant a guard would do. Amen? But the overall purpose of being, being strong and very courageous mm -hmm. And observing is to maintain our divine direction mm -hmm. and spiritual balance. I'll say that again. The overall purpose of being strong and very courageous and observant is that one to maintain the divine direction and spiritual balance. That's very important. Mm -hmm. You see, they're like those, those three things out the, 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 the our strength and our courage and our vigilance are like. Um, like a compass mm -hmm. that guides us right. through where we're going through. Jesus talks about uh, 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 various ways. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the, the wide is the, is the way to destruction, but narrow is the way to salvation. Over there in Matthew uh, four, uh, 7 and 14, mm -hmm. this particular verse instructs us of, uh, of the way to life and death. The large, wide open way leads to one down the wrong trail. Mm -hmm. But the one that, that will that, that one would see life and find a way through through to life is through that straight gate down the narrow way. Down the through the straight gate down the narrow way. And when, when we when we look at the straight gate, what that what that word means straight, it means to make it firm and to establish. And so when I go through that straight gate, it's a narrow gate. It, it makes me firm and it, and it sets me up. And then the narrow way, it's, the, the, it's, it's like the, the best way I can describe it is, is through that narrow way is there's a crushing. And so in order to get the best of it, I have to put you through a crushing. Wow. And so, so, so the root juice comes out of the grape. Yeah. The, the, the oil yeah. comes out of the olive. Wow. And, and that's, you can use those things. You eat up those other things, but but that anointing that you receive, mm -hmm. that Holy Spirit that you receive, yes. that's what establishes your way. That's yes. what makes your way for a way firm. Yes. And the narrow way, and of course, it, it, it helps, it brings the best out of, mm -hmm. like I said, that, that, that juice and that, that oil, but it also brings the worst out of. Mm -hmm. yes. It squeezes the worst out of. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It squeezes yes. those yes. things, those troubling things out of. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. You know, yes. it, it, it afflicts the, the, the afflicting things and squeezes it out of you. Yeah. Those distressful yeah. things that squeezes it out of you. Yeah. Yeah. When you go through that narrow way, and so so when you're when you're when you're being strong, when you're being courageous, when you're when you're doing those things, being be vigilant, 
And God establishes you to make you firm. And so you go in the divine direction. You go the direction that he wants you to go in. Amen. Amen. It also helps you maintain your spiritual balance. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Our spiritual balance. So our spiritual equilibrium is very delicate balance. Mm -hmm. It's very, very delicate. Yes. And to hold on, and it's impossible to maintain without the word of God. Amen. You cannot maintain a balance without the word of God. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, he told Joshua, don't go to the right, don't go to the left. Go right down the middle. Right. Amen. 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 But when you look at uh, look at the spiritual connotation of right and left, mm -hmm. and when you think of the right, when you hear the word right, what it's talking about, it denotes prosperity. Mm -hmm. And it talks about right and left. But God don't want you to go too far to the right. Because there's a scripture in the, in the word there that you'll find. I'm not going to take you much that. I'm going to let you find it. Mm -hmm. That talks about don't let me become too prosperous because I might forget about you. That's right. Mm -hmm. don't, don't make me too poor because I might go steal because I ain't my way up. He wants, he wants you to keep that balance. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I want to show you something. I thought this was so amazing about these verses. We go back to Joshua 1 and 7. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you a balance in this. See, God is a balanced God. He's not, he, he's not you know, off balance anywhere. But if you look at the first verse, it says, only the first part of that verse, it says, only be strong and very courageous. Mm -hmm. That's the balance. Yes. To be to, 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 to prosper by not going to the left or to the right. And so in order to keep my straight direction, I've got to be strong and courageous. And that balance is all not turning to the left or to the right. Mm -hmm. And so throughout this work, you'll see a balance that God is striking with, 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 with his, his, his directions here. And so it, he also talks about don't turn to the left. Mm -hmm. Now, I looked up that, the word left, and, it, and, and, the, and the metaphor for that is like when they put on a, someone puts on a cloak. You throw the, the cloak tail to the left. So it covers your left side. Mm -hmm. That way your right side stays there. So if you have a weapon on your right side, all you gotta do is pick it out and do what you gotta do. But if I threw the cloak over the right, now I gotta fight this thing to get it off of me. Right. And I'm trying to keep this other thing off of me at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to get too far to the left. Right. Also, the left is a lot of leaders in the Bible that were left handed right. very unique. Right. Right. And they had these unique qualities about them. Yeah. And, and, and those that, that were dealing with the left and the right, they were above the <laughs> They were robbery probably <laughs> Jews. <laughs> but, but he says, don't turn too far to the left, don't right. turn too far to the right. right. Stay right down the middle. That's so what I got for you is straight ahead. Mm -hmm. If you get the beer at all, you get, get, get all kinds of... Uh, distracted, you will be a messing with this guy and, and missing all of what God is doing over here and wondering why God didn't answer your prayers. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or, or you, you think you're doing the right thing, but you leave the right, the, the, you left the right path. You, you know, and so it's, it's important that we maintain our spiritual balance. Amen? Amen. So the second promise truth I want to talk to you about talks about God's word ensures prosperous results. Mm -hmm. First one said, "What the first promise of truth is that God's word directs your way." Mm -hmm. The second one says that God's word ensures prosperous results. Mm -hmm. Over in Joshua one and eight, it says, "This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written therein. For then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you deal wisely and have good." Success. I'm using the, the, the amplified version because it kind of expands it more, but, but your Bible may say something that's, that's, that's similar to it. So this make your way prosperous talks about moving forward. Mm -hmm. so, so he's saying that, that there's certain things that are happening that cause you to move forward. Mm -hmm. Amen. But the the, the uh, defining word in getting results of success or prosperity is that word shadow. Mm -hmm. That word shall. That's the connection. Without shall, then you cannot have prosperity and success by this definition. Mm -hmm. Because shall, when, I, when you look up the word shall, it means to plan to, intend to, or expect to. Mm -hmm. So I shall go later. I plan to go later. I intend to go later. I expect to go later. Right. I shall. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping y'all 
proper evening. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the B definition says, we'll have to, is determined to, but definitely will. You shall do it, he shall do it. So when you look at this word and it says, you shall, if the law shall not depart, then you plan on not having that word depart from your mouth, leave your mouth. And you plan on being in the word day and night. You expect this word to never leave your mouth. You expect to meditate on this word every day. You expect to make your way prosperous. You expect to have good success. That's what the shall does. It, it causes the expectation of his promises to be fulfilled in your life. Because that's what God was talking about when he said he shall. Yes. He was talking yes. about his promises. Right. The things, good things are going to happen when you get into this word and, 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 and really attend to what's going on. So this word shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate on the day and night. You shall observe and do all that written therein. You shall do that. I didn't say you will. I didn't say you must. You shall. You're the one that makes that decision. Not the right. I'm, just, I'm just telling you what the word says. Amen. 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 And see, the results of, of, of shall is, 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 is pointed out here. Make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Yeah. That's the result of shall. Mm -hmm. Now, here in America, we kind of got it mixed, mixed, mixed up or messed up. I can't even say it right. That's how messed up it is. <laughs> of what prosperity and success really mean. Yes, sir. And I ain't going to change the game. I, I used to believe the same thing. I used to believe it. More things I can get a, get a hold of, more things I can accomplish, more goals I can set and, and do, then that shows my success or my prosperity. And when I'm not doing that, that shows that I'm my poverty and, and my failure. And, and nobody wants to, you know, to be a failure in anything. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of people walking around going to these bookstores, and well, they used to go to bookstores, not even going to the internet, but Amazon.com, and they got all these different self-help books tell you how to get Success, mm -hmm. how to goal plan, how to uh, influence people and stuff like that. I mean, there's all these different ways that make you scratch your head. Mm -hmm. But I remember when I used to chase after all these books, and I spent thousands of dollars on these books. Mm -hmm. And my sister told me, she said, Robert, all you got to do is read the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, no, but there's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may have said to said, he said, all you got to do is walk over to hot coals and you will you be successful. <laughs> I can't walk across the cold floor with no socks on. I'm trying to walk through some hot coals and stuff. But the man tends to come up with all these yeah. convoluted things to do. But all you got to do is just get a new word. Amen. Right, amen. And so the Webster Dictionary says that prosperous means to have this characteristic. Uh, that, that is characterized by financial success, or good fortune, where you flourish. So if you're not getting that, then you're not successful. Mm -hmm. I've learned how to be content with my faith and my blessing. There's a word in there, if you ever go through it, then you will never forget it. You'll realize at that point, it doesn't matter how much you have and what you don't have. One second of God's favor, I was 24 hours off of it. So the biblical definition of prosperous means to advance, to prosper, to make progress. So as long as I'm making progress, I'm being prosperous. Yeah. It's that when I sit back on my laurels and don't do anything because I don't have anything, that's when I'm not being prosperous. Now I'm waiting for something else to happen. God said, all I want you to do is just follow me. Just do like I tell you, you're going to make it. You're going to do it. You're going to do exactly what I promised you to do. Amen? And, and when, it, when it talks about the success, I, when I was reading about success, I'm like, yeah, that's me. I used to come up with all these different plans. And, and, and I, I, you know, I make a decision on doing something, and I would, I would come up with plan A, B, C, and D. Mm -hmm. And I start on plan A. <laughs> and if plan A doesn't seem to work out because it might be an elephant mess, and I can come over to plan B. Mm -hmm. See, plan B is going to work. Plan B may work just a little bit, and all of a sudden it falls off. I'll go to plan C. Mm -hmm. I only got one more plan left. But if this C don't work, I go to D. Now, if D don't work, guess who I go to? I go to God. I go to do all that other stuff, and I finally turn to God. Why not turn to him in the first place? Let him direct your path. Let him set up your plan. Amen? Because the de if you follow the definition, a person has success that is measured by the attainment of goal. When you achieve that goal that you set up, that 
that you imagine that you come up with out of your mind, then you'll be a success. And I said I wanted to go up the Mount Everest uh, with a backpack and, and, and some Twinkies, and I did that. <laughs> then I was a success. But if I look at it like, man, I ain't going up there. It's too high. He's like, we're going to fail you. You know, you want to be doing that. your goal. No, that's not how it really works out. Because the biblical definition, that's the one that means most, that's right, is that to be prudent, to be circumspect, and to have wise understanding. So let me let me let me break each one of those down. I, I really love how this how this, this came out. It says to be prudent means to be wise and handle in practical matters. When 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 I when I be successful the way God wants me to be successful, then I'm wisely handling whatever God gives. Me. Mm -hmm. I'm being I'm, I'm being being a wise steward of my money. I'm being a wise steward over my kids. I'm being a wise steward with everything that he's given me to do what he needs me to do. Mm -hmm. That's that, that prudence that comes in. I have I'm exercising good judgment or common sense. I, I wrote down here that there's some sense that's not common to most mm -hmm. people. There, there's a there's, there's people that have a book sense, and there's people that have common sense. Mm -hmm. There's some people that have technical knowledge, and there's some people that have practical knowledge. Right. Practical knowledge will get you to do anything. Mm -hmm. Technical knowledge, you got to go buy the book that the volume two of the book you read. And by, by the time you read all the volume, whatever you needed to do is already done. Right. But if I've got common sense, then I know that some things need to be done, mm -hmm. some things don't need to be done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I need to get involved in the situation, sometimes I need to avoid the situation. Right. When I read this word, it talks about food. Mm -hmm. I know all of us have read from fool or two. Amen. <laughs> I'm reading this word, and it says, answer a fool according to his father. Right. And then it says, the very next verse says, answer not a fool according to his father. I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's certain fools that you try to help out to get out of the situation they're in. And if they listen to you, they get up. There are certain fools that you got to get foolish with. Right. And God said, don't deal with that. Leave him alone. Right. <laughs> Leave him alone. Right. Yeah. His father will get him right. Yes. There's nothing that you can say to get him right. But somehow we get it mixed up. We, we got to help everybody out of their foolishness. And guess what? We look out that foolish as they do. That's right. We walk around as crazy as they are. That's right. Amen. God will not have us be that way. He talks about being circumspect. Evil of circumstances and potential consequences. Evil of circumstances and potential consequences. You see trouble, don't mess with it. You're like a fool, don't mess with trouble. Because if you think, well, I got some money to help them out, I'll just give them $10. Well, they don't need the $10 because they can't really go burn it up on something else anyway. But you can be walking around with no gas in your car. And so, so you gotta, you got to use that, that, that wise. Yes. Uh, uh, Seeking and, and mm -hmm. wisdom to really heed the circumstances. Let me see what, what is really happening here. Mm -hmm. You need somebody to call me back next week because I'm going to get paid until next week. They get mad at you, know that they should be ready for that money. Because <laughs> <laughs> they think yeah. right now, they can't wait until next week. Right? You know, sometimes you got to test them just to see. And then all of a sudden, oh man, I have to find $10 in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that leads to wise understanding mm -hmm. that the practical wisdom that, that comes about. I was, uh, sometimes I use the kids as, as my grandkids as, as sounding boards because in their innocence, they, they, they give me the truth. I'm knowing that they're giving me the truth. <laughs> and I was, I was, I dropped off my, my, my daughter from work and I was riding back to back home with my, my granddaughter and there was a pawn shop. And I looked at the pawn shop and I said, what is that pawn shop tell me? And she says, uh, and this deals with practical uh, wise understanding. And she says, I don't know, look like you can go borrow money then. I said, right, you can't go borrow money then. Right behind the pawn shop was a bank. I says, what does that bank tell you? I don't know, you can go save money. <laughs> so yeah, that's true. You could save money at a bank. So why is a pawn shop existing in the presence of the bank? If I can save money at the bank, why do I have to go to the pawn shop and borrow money? Right? Amen. It's because I'm not being wise in how I deal with my finance. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit started to look a little bit deeper with it. I kept looking at it and I realized that the bank is bigger or taller than the pawn shop. Uh -huh. And he said, it's the small foxes that spoil the bank. That's right. 
See, when you when you get into the Word of God, what happens is He'll take this complex Word yeah. and break it down to a practical understanding yeah. so that you can use it for your daily walk. Yeah. And then He'll remind you of some things through this. Yeah. But if you never get into this thing, some things, I ain't got no money, there's a pawn shop, you run over there and borrow some money. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, go to the payday loan. And I go write a check on money that I ain't got. To pay them back money I didn't have in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and then when they come, guess what? I wrote bounce checks at the bank. You won't get a bounce check. Mm -hmm. But they got smart on that. They said, I don't know. We're going to get your money before you do. That's right. We're going in and, and, and snatch it out. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm saying I've never done it before, but I learned very quickly. <laughs> 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 that dog going good. You know, I'm going to get rid of that thing there. Amen. 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 Now let me move on to the, because to the, I'm almost home here. Let us talk about this, this third promise truth. Mm -hmm. It talks about God stands by his word. That's right. Joshua, it, it, it says there in the verse 1 and 9, it says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be, be frightened and do not be uh, dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes, yes. The Lord yes. God is with you wherever you go. God says, have I not commanded you? Mm -hmm. Do not steal. So, being that out of, out of Exodus, God says, thou shalt not steal, what should you not do? Steal. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Amen. Thou shalt not kill, what should you not do? You should not kill. It's a command, right? Amen. So he said, have I not commanded you? So why are you walking around weak and afraid? That is just as much of a commandment to, to be strong enough and concurrent as it is like to steal and kill. When you look at it from that aspect, and that's all the way that you can look at it. Because he said, look, Joshua, I'm commanding you not to be not to be weak. I'm commanding you not to be afraid. I'm commanding you not to be, be dismayed. I'm commanding you to be. I'm, I'm calling you to what, what you are. I'm commanding you to be who you are. Yes, I'm commanding right. you to be strong. Yes, I'm yes. commanding you to be yes. courageous. Amen. I'm commanding you to be vigilant. I'm Amen. commanding you. Amen. And there's no, nobody that can deny the commands of God. That's right. He told the ocean, just for our new earth. And it stops right, right. right there. Yes, he told the sun, I want you to come up day and night. Come up uh -huh. on, on the day, seven night, and it's still doing it. It can't right. change. That's he told right. the grass, when you put semen on the grass, guess what? It's still growing. And coming up through the cracks. It breaks the scene then up. To the command of God. He's my provider, he's my 
to be a follower of Christ, it's going to be rougher now than it was before. Right. You see, before when you were running with the devil and when you wasn't doing the name of God, he wasn't paying attention to you. Right. But now it's become a formidable foe. Oh my goodness, this man has got strong. He done gave a little bit of courage. Now he's starting to pay attention to what's going on. I need to start trying to stop him. But there's no way he can be able to stop him because when we went out there to, to, to the power of Jesus said, but take heart. Mm -hmm. Take heart. Have a strong heart. Yeah. Have a courageous heart. Yeah. Have yeah. a vigilant heart. Yeah. Because Christ said, I have overcome. Mm -hmm. so the, the, the Christian that holds on to their faith, even to death against the power of their foes, will overcome. Yes. You will overcome the enemy by the words of your testimony mm -hmm. and by the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. That's what this story, this is what this is all about. Mm -hmm. That you can be strong enough to occur. Yes. Because it's something that God has already promised you. That you're ready to go take possession of, and there's nothing that's going to stop you from getting that possession, from gaining that possession. Amen. Amen. So as we go forward, in closing, as we go forward, <laughs> know that the peace of Christ that abides in your heart has empowered you to be able to overcome all oppression, all affliction, all tribulation, all distress, all strengths of this world. You've been empowered and able to do that, but only be strong. Yeah. Amen. 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 Those promises in, in his word as they came to you. Because in Jesus, when he when he, he set out to do what God had told him to do, the promise that he made to him. He said, Once everything is done, I will put all your enemies on your feet. And it will become your footstool. Yeah. And so Jesus was stripped and with courage. He stood before the council as they judged him wrong. As they as they condemned him to a death that a crime he never committed. But he took it with strength and with courage because he knew that was the only way that we were able to be set free from the crimes we commit, the sins that we commit. So he stood there before that council and listened to what they had to say. And now I come back with a moment of work. He took strength and courage for him to do that. He hung there on that cross for six hours until the Lord. He stayed there on that cross, spread wide, open wide for people to, to look at and jeer. And, and, and say that if you be God, come down and we'll believe you. We want to believe you outside of that. But he hung with it. And he had the power to come off if he wanted to. But strength and courage kept him. He laid there in that grave, in that tomb for three days. He laid there, going through the process, the transition from death to life. And he rose there on the third day. And now he sits there. The right hand of God. Yes. All for our sake. Yes. All so that we may be strengthened by that example. All that we can be courageous by that example. All so that we can be vigilant and do what we're supposed to do by that example. So be strong and courageous. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that went forth today. Lord, you have blessed us with a, with a mighty, powerful understanding of strength and courage. And I ask you, Father, that mighty of Holy Spirit, that each individual here, man and woman, girl and boy, that they receive exactly what it, it is an understanding of their part in your promise. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will give them ample time to sit down with your word and, and with you and go through the details of that promise so they'll know exactly what to do. So that as they go forward, Lord God, they won't be veered off the left or the right by the distractions of this world. Heavenly Father, I ask that you will provide them with a constant reminder that no matter where they go, no matter what they do, that you're always with them, that you'll never leave them or forsake them. So God, I, I, I pray this prayer knowing that your promises are true, knowing that your word is, is, is infallible, that everything that, that is in your word will come to pass. And all these things we praise you and glorify you as we go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Amen. One last point is if you appreciate.
appreciated what you heard, and they're not really able to appreciate what you heard, and in, in essence, that you're rewarding me for that, but that you're supporting the ministry so that such work can continue to go forward, because it's through your financial support or help that we're able to, to get the things that we need in order to make this, this ministry spread wide. One of the things that, that we're, we've been, been working on at a small level is our e-church. I, I believe that there are people here in San Antonio proper that want to hear the word, but I know there's people out there in the highways and the byways in the various cities and states around the United States that want to hear a word such as this coming from a place such as this. And so we use those monies to help enhance our ability to do that uh, with cameras and with the right the sound system. system. So if you come come on, on the air with us, you can pull this just as if you're sitting here on Monday. And so, so I ask that you give freely, however it, how it is that the Holy Spirit guides and directs you in that, and, and follow whatever the principles of finance that the, the Word puts forth as far as how you deal with your tithes and offerings. Know that here in this place, it, it was planted in the fertile ground and used for a particular purpose and plan that God has set. Uh, so at this moment, I'd like to give you that opportunity to, to, to participate and bless God this way. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. May everyone be blessed throughout the week. That was a powerful word from Esther Proctor. Proctor. And um, this is the season, everyone. Um, people were sad, but just like he said, the Lord is telling us to be strong and of a good courage. Be strong. It is not materials that drive us. Keep that in mind. As we go throughout the month, for some of you who have just joined us across the states, I apologize if I missed anyone in any particular state. Um, continue to pick up canned goods and take them to shelters. We want to continue to feed the children. Um, to at least be supportive throughout the United States uh, with children's shelters. And we really like to support them. Here in San Antonio, we have uh, Boysville, and we will continue to support them in feeding the children. Uh, also, keep Pastor uh, Robert Proctor in your prayers. Continue to pray for him. And also, continue to cover yourselves as well as we are about to venture in to our new coming year. Be blessed, have a fun, filled week, and also meet us again next Sunday. Amen. Thank you, everyone.